Welcome to a Real Man Wood podcast. This is Chris Liss, your host from RotoWire, and I'm joined by my co-host from Yahoo Sports, Dalton Del Don. You see this thing I have in my face? It's like a it's like a dog muzzle or something. I feel like I'm one of those dogs that has a cone, can't bite itself. But basically the sound was a little blown out, I guess, when on my end. And so I had this thing, like when I ordered the uh, microphone, there was like all this stuff, like the stuff you should buy was like the mic stand and the microphone and all that shit. And it was one of these. So I bought this and I was like, why do I have this? What's the point of it? But maybe this is the point of it. Yeah, no, it sounds good on my end. Uh, and as far as uh, output on my side, we talked about getting a new computer, either last pod or the one before. And I went with your advice saying if you constantly wait for the next one, you might end up waiting you know, too, too much. And, and I looked at it and my browser will not update my Chrome and I can't figure out how to fix it. And it's like causing problems like I did a Fantasy Pros podcast. So I just said, screw it. So I have one in route. So if there was any problem on my my end, a brand new computer better fix that starting next week. Yeah, I, I would hope so. I mean, we've been dealing with problems on your end for a long time. I don't know about that. It's, it's ninety percent of the time it's your fault, and you're in a different country and all that. But but okay, it's been yeah. This computer is like five six years old, and you know that is old as far as computers go. Yes, people need to know that. That's wisdom that you can get from this podcast only. That it's five or six years is a long time to have a computer in this day and age. Yeah, it really is. Anyway, so what's going on, Liz? What, what's new with you, man? Are you watching any, any of the NBA playoffs? That's like the, the thing I'm most into right now, actually. No, I'm not really watching. I've been tracking a little bit because we have Dre on uh, XM right. on Wednesday. So, you know, I got to yeah. talk, you know, I got to fake it at least. And so I, I have to at least know what happened. But no, I haven't really been watching. I heard Dwayne Wade went off. Yeah. We were talking today about how, uh, how good Dwayne Wade was. Like before the LeBron thing, like the LeBron thing kind of ruined him because he got his titles, but he'd already had a title with the Heat. And, uh, you know, and he didn't, yeah, he had right. a title with, 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 Shaq. yeah, no, I heard you guys talking about uh, that segment. I heard you and you guys kind of made it seem like he got it because of LeBron. And I'm like, well, you realize he won one before right, LeBron right. got there with Shaq. and Shaq yeah. wasn't anywhere close to his prime. I mean, I think Wade set a record for most free throw attempts per game in the finals. If he didn't, it was close. Cause he was just lived at the line. Yeah. He was like Harden kind of back then, but no, right. he didn't shoot the three like well, Harden does, you know, yeah, but, right. uh, yeah. but he would just get to the basket all the time. He was unstoppable in crunch time. And uh, he's kind of overlooked as like one of the superstars of his era, you know, and I think it was because he went to the heat and that super team and, you know, it just yeah, no, he cool. got overshadowed. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, the interesting thing also like LeBron getting blown out at home in game one and they're like legitimately in peril. Like I still expect them to win, to win that series, but that team's bad. That make no mistake. That team is absolutely awful. Like this will take one of the more, more Herculean efforts from James. And then uh, I saw her Dre pick the Spurs over my warriors. Uh, I got to give him a hard time. About that, and then I bet money on the Sixers. That's turned into a great series. And I just read before we started recording this that Embiid is doubtful game three, so I'm uh, not not happy about that. I mean, the three seed in the in a ridiculously loaded West is down 0-2 both home games. I mean, that's crazy. Boogie Cousins, I love him, and he, he's definitely a good dude. I, I live kind of close to Sacramento, and like quietly, he did so much charity work. And after he left, that's never publicized. But go figure, sometimes it does matter to play defense on the second half of the floor. And, man, it's kind of indisputable at this point that that was addition by subtraction. Obviously, it's, it's as crazy circumstance as having AD, but, but what a beast Davis is. That, that's a great takeaway, that New Orleans story. Yeah. Is, is Anthony Davis a top three NBA player right now? Yeah, yeah, win health. The only question with him is just health. Sure. No, but I mean, who, I mean, you've got like LeBron, yeah. you got Curry, you've got Draymond, you've got Durant, uh, you've got LeBron, LeBron, Harden, and Anthony Giannis. Davis are the three are the three best players probably right Giannis. now. LeBron, Harden, and yeah, sure, right there, Giannis and Durant. Yeah, you could argue those. Sure, there's a lot of good. Anyway, but I mean, I mean, what Davis is doing is just a joke. It's it's it's, it's absolutely it's so it's so good. Right, right. Yeah, I've been watching. I, I kind of wish I would. I, I might at some point. I could get like I, Apple TV has an NBA app, so I may decide to. I don't know. It's, well, it's like one nice thing about the NBA is the games are legitimately two hours and twenty minutes. I mean, they're, they're so much quicker than these these baseball games. As I said last week, you know, I don't have DFS going. I don't have any bets going. So I don't have a fantasy playoff thing going. It's just without any sort of stake in it. It's cool to watch, and I actually. I really think this this era of the NBA is a golden era of stars. Like the the players are still are probably the best ever. I mean, obviously they they you know you think they get better by over time, regardless. But just in terms of like the greatest stars at one time, like I just think you know you still have sort of peak LeBron, and then you have all the Anthony Davis, Giannis, right. Harden types there. I I just think it's like really deep and really good. 
Um, so I should watch it, but yeah. Yeah, it's know, interesting it, if, if, if John is, they can't even, they can't beat that Boston depleted team. I, I'm curious how they're going to do there. But you mentioned DFS. It's actually surprisingly fun to play, especially in the weekend when there are four standalone games, say on a Saturday. It was, it was interesting picking the superstars. I mean, there was Westbrook, Harden, Greek Freak, and like AD, I think all played in the same day. So like, you know, picking where to spend your money and obviously concentrating on the four games. So it was fun with DFS as well. But I get it. We've been over this. You're, you're a Knicks fan. And so you have just no stake. I, I, I totally agree with you. If I didn't have any rooting gambling interest, I, I probably wouldn't pay nearly the attention. It, it's still, yeah, it's still exciting because sort of the unicorns. And I didn't even mention Simmons and Embiid. And, you know, the guys that are in the league are just really exciting. But, yeah, that's the only reason I even bothered to even marginally pay attention to it. But let's talk some baseball. So, you know, my teams uh, so far, um, my NFBC teams are my worst teams. And the one that you did with me, the beat Chrysalis 2, you're in first, I'm in last. That was the one that I picked up Thames. He got a groin injury, but he still hit two home runs already uh, this week. Homer today. Yeah, Homer today. the second one of the week. And he, and he missed a game on Monday, but he, yeah. got the right, he got the right matchup. He missed Luis Castillo and he got the scrubs. So that was good. Yeah, um, so so I'm winning. Not only am I winning that league, but I just looked before we went on here. I'm, uh, I mean, it's obviously early, but I'm uh, 25th overall that that uh, squad. So it's gonna drive me, it's gonna drive me crazy though if Thames does blast 45 bombs. Right. It's just gonna uh, infuriate Dude, I cost me. you the title. That's really harsh. That's harsh yeah. by picking him up. I'm the, the idiot who dropped him though. <laughs> I'm the idiot who dropped him. I deserve it. It's yeah. so so true. I hope I finished last, but cost you the title. That would give me great satisfaction. You know what's funny is we didn't even bet on that league. I know, I know, we didn't. We, we bet on the other one, and then uh, we bet on Yahoo Friends and Family, and I'm in third in that, and I think you're, like, way down at the bottom. Yeah, it's like the opposite of last year. I won Yahoo Friends and Family and didn't do too well in, in the cash leagues. And uh, so far this year, not only am I winning that league, we're in together, but the other one we did bet on, even though we're not together, but it's one I did earlier, uh, same format. I'm winning that one as well. So, and, and another, the great big fantasy thing, I'm doing okay. And another, I'm doing well in that, but not only is my team off to a slow start in the friends and family, but it's just an awful team. I don't know what I was doing during that. A couple injuries here and there. I don't have a ton of confidence in that one bouncing back. So yeah, I it's kind of- you drafted it. It was really a piece of shit. Yeah, treated, treated, right, right. But, um, but anyway, so so it's still so early. So who knows? Who knows? We, we don't know yet. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in really big, the, the one league I'm in really big trouble is the main event because- Bumgarner. Baumgartner went down and I went with the strategy of just going with a lot of like Gazelman and Ryan Madsen and Patances types like at the back end rather than forcing some bad pitchers. What happened last week is really annoying. Felix Hernandez had a two-step, so it seemed. So I put him in even though I was going to drop him, but I was like, ah, he's got the Royals and then he's got a, a start uh, against somebody not that good. I can't remember the A's or something. And yeah. so I was like, all right, I need the strikeouts. I'll just put him in even though I saw him face the Giants and I'm like, he's toast. So I put him in my lineup and then I looked at... Uh, some you know the NFBC site and it was like wait he's only got one start so then I looked back at Rotowire and we also had him only for one start so I was like I'm not putting him for one road start so I took him out put in a, a reliever like Batances who gets like as many strikeouts as Felix does you sure. know if Felix has one start one start right and so then uh, that locked Felix gets a win he didn't pitch very well in Kansas City but he uh, did enough to get a win and the Royals are terrible and then he does get the two step they reinstate him on Sunday. He strikes out seven, gives up five base runners in six innings, doesn't get a win. But so, you know, I, <laughs> so I'm just like, fuck. So I dropped him anyway, even though he had a good week because I watched him pitch in that last game on Sunday and he was still throwing 89, 88. You know, he's getting bailed out on some, you know, line drives and fly balls, just going to people. And right. uh, so I moved on. But I'm just like, I have like, you know, I don't know how many, like 95 strikeouts. And the next lowest guy is like 130. And the top guy is like 190 in, in my league. Right. And, you know, that's that hundred strikeout gap or at least like 60 to get into the, back into the, you know, the upper middle pack. I don't know how I'm going to make that up. I mean, Bumgarner will come back. Bumgarner's not Chris Sale. He's going to get some strikeouts. But, you know, and so you Bumgarner, do look at your actual individual standings like this time of year. It's fine. I mean, well, I, I think that's a legitimate problem that I have. And I'm thinking like it's either despair or like, OK, well, I can't really do well in the overall being probably one of the bottom 10 teams. I haven't looked at the overall standings, but I've got to be near the very bottom in strikeouts. And so I can't really compete in strikeouts. I mean, what am I going to get so many strikeouts that I overtake everybody over the year? How magically in a 15 team league, how am I going to get that? Right. At or, some point do you shift your attention then just to winning or, or concentrate how I can finish in, in the specific league. Then you probably do. I'm not going to do that yet, but I was thinking, okay, well it's, it's easy to get like despairing and be like, okay, well this is a, a wasted entry. But, um, what I, the way to do it is say, okay, I need to gain about five strikeouts a week on the pack. And that's just not easy when I don't really have the horses. I have Carrasco, who's been rained out and 
delayed and he's only gotten like six strikeouts when all these Astros pitchers are getting 12 every time out and I don't have them. But right. I just need to find that two-star guy. Find that, uh, you know, if it's Betances and he's going crazy and getting a lot of strikeouts, fine. Use him when they have seven games and maybe he gets into four of them. You know, I've got to be really trying to gain five strikeouts here, four strikeouts there. And I've got to keep that up all year just to get to the middle of the pack. I mean, you think, oh, it's April, whatever, 18th. You're fine, but you're not fine. I mean, th- those strikeouts aren't going to magically come back. And even if, I, even if you put me at even and put everyone back to zero in the category starting today, I'd still be an underdog to do well given the, the way my team is composed. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's still pretty early, but I mean, I, I get what you're saying. You have to factor in things like you, you know, we're counting on Bumgarner strikeouts, obviously, and that's not going to be there the first couple months. I have a couple questions for you about uh, this this fab process. Actually, some interesting things happened to me. Um, I, a uh, couple guys in particular. So Joey Lucchese, somebody even called me out on Twitter in that aforementioned great big fantasy baseball, Justin Mason league, um, saying like, well, Dalton must, must love him or who the, who the hell spent $580 on, on Lucchese. And, and I guess it was me and someone, someone pointed out that it was me. And, um, I look at that league and, and no one else, I believe even bid on him. So, um, and that's out of a thousand, obviously. So a couple things I want to talk about with there. 15 team league. Very barren. There's no one else I saw on the on there. Are, are there all. DL slots? Like, can you DL somebody if they're on the DL? In that I believe league? there are a couple in that. I, I believe there are. So but, it's super deep. So it's 15 like the NFBC, but you also remove all the DL players out of the pool, basically. Right. Two and then my, my so my 12 team NFBC leagues, I missed out on him a bit with $300 bids throughout, or, or or $250 bids, whatever. So that made me not feel so crazy. Because And the reason I didn't go higher on them, by the way, is because I already blew my wad on like Hunter Strickland or something. I would have gone higher. So it's funny. I'm like, I felt like a moron and then frustrated that my $180, $220 bids in 12 teamers wouldn't get the same guy. Yeah. Well, but, but so, but you're, you're basing your, uh, the, the soundness of your decision based on what other people think basically. Or, or the fact that 14 other members in that league didn't put a dollar bid on them. And they're like, you know, industry members. I, I don't know. It was just okay. interesting. Too. Let me just give you a little uh, story that you probably know because I probably told it 20 times. Two years ago, maybe three years ago in Tout, um, Carlos Correa gets called up from AA to AAA. I mean, the dude is already a, a top three overall prospect in baseball. Raked at AA. He gets moved up to AAA. And I believe whoever it was, Jed Lowry, whoever was playing shortstop, was hurt for the Astros. Glad you mentioned him. Okay. So, Go. so I had thirty-two bucks left in Fab. It was like in you know late May or June, and I just bid all of it on Correa. Now, back then there was something called Vickery, where if you bid thirty-two and the next highest was twenty, you got the guy for twenty-one. You just got him for a buck more than the second highest bid. Does Tao not do that anymore? No, I wish they did. I love it. I well, would I be so know. aggressive, but, but it could actually uh, result in more spending if two people are like, "Ah, screw it, I'll be aggressive. Who cares?" And they both, you know, you know the, the guy who loses is laughing his ass off at the guy who who had to beat him out by a buck. But so I bid all my money and I got him for a dollar, which means nobody else even bid. And you can bid on minor leaguers. You just have to put them in your active lineup. Like, how could eleven other quote experts not even bid a dollar on? A, a top five overall prospect who's just got bumped from double A to triple A when like the starter on the team got hurt. I mean, yeah, how'd that work out? How'd that work out for you? I won the league, you know, and, and, and I won the league despite losing Miguel Cabrera and George Springer for two months each in the AL only league, because basically I got four months of Correa, which basically filled in the two months of injuries for those guys. So it was like, I had no injuries basically. I mean, you know, other, yeah. everyone gets hurt injuries. So you can almost never gauge how sound a decision you make is based on what the league is doing, especially if it's like experts. I think the NFBC is way more indicative. I think like in those expert leagues, you just never know, you know, there's no money at stake. Nobody put money down. Uh, There's a little bit in that, in that Justin Mason league, there's some money, but it's not as much. And I don't know. I think a lot of people are just mailing it in, man. I, I really do. So real quick about Luke Casey. Um, I, I mean, I'm not a scout. We, we, I, you probably heard enough about you know his repertoire. Not a lot of fastball, but kind of deceptive stuff. But to me, I just look at anyone in his decent pedigree. He's like the second person from his uh, draft class. I mean, not a first rounder, but the second person from a 2016 draft class to make the, the – his thing is he's ready now. Like he may not have a long-term ceiling, but anyone who makes four starts and puts up 25 strikeouts – uh, four walks, one of those starts in Coors Field, 14.0 swinging, swinging strike percentage. To me, I'm like sight and see whoever that is, whatever. I'm like blindly just going to see what happens. 
Does that make sense? Is that not good enough? The signature significance, I would say this is like hitting six homers in three games or something like that to me. Yeah, I mean, signature, signature significance you know, can mean more than one thing. Like, if you say, okay, this guy struck out 18 guys in a game, okay? Mm. I, I put this out on Twitter a couple of years ago. It was, would you rather have a guy who you only knew th- these things about? A guy who struck out 200 batters in a season the year before or a guy who struck out 18 batters in a game the year before? That's yeah, all you easily. knew about the guy. Right? It's a no-brain. Most no people brain. picked the 200 because it was a way bigger sample, right? It's a large sample. 200 strikeouts. There's only like 13 guys who did it last year. You know, not that many. But, there's no, but if you look at who struck out 18 in a game all time, it's like a, a who's And how who. many people were close to striking out 200 last year? Probably another handful. Right. You know what I mean? And who like no missed a month or didn't come up till May or something, right? So, it, you know, 200 means you're okay. It means you can strike out guys, you know, but it's not even – it's not a big deal. Which is I mean, funny because everyone's preaching sample size, but in this aspect, I fully believe in, in, the, in what you're saying. So the, the, the 18Ks, it's like Tom Seaver, you know, the worst right. pitcher was like Ron Guidry. You know I mean? It was like who won a Cy Young with a 174 ERA and was a good pitcher for a long time. Like it, it was a who's who of all time greats. Randy Johnson, it was Kerry Wood, who wasn't there, Clemens. You know, it was just ridiculous. And, and right. Hall of Famers up and down. And so, and if you look at the 200 strikeout guys, it's just a bunch of guys. So, obviously, that was the right call. Um, I think four home runs in a game, too. Like, Mark Witten did it and some scrubs did it. Obviously, Scooter Jeanette did it last year. But it's still, like, a list of pretty ridiculous players. Um, and so, what do you say, six home runs in a week or 14 stri- you know, 25 strikeouts over four starts? You know, that's obviously not the same thing. Yeah, I'm not saying he's quite, like, that good. But I am just saying over four starts, one in Coors Field, uh, Petco Park, um, I, I think that's worth just, just investing in, right, just right. in of itself. So what you're saying is, is less signature significance than plausible upside. Like, he's established plausible upside. And, you know, Pianowski's always talking about this. You don't have time to confirm that it's legit. By the time right. he confirms that it's legit, it's like last year's Luis Severino. By, like, June, you're like, oh, this is, like, a top 10 starter, top five starter, right? Like, and if but, like Steamer who's conservative is now projecting a be- based heavily on these four games, you know, it's 3.6 ERA and a nine, basically a K per nine per K, you right. know, K per nine. That's really pretty legit, you know, I mean, for conservative. I mean, so it moved the needle for that projected system. So yes, not super significant uh, that, that his performance, but pretty, you know, pretty close for four games. To me, it was worth just blindly being like, let's see what happens next. I mean, well, what's I- funny is in that league, you would have had another shot, another bite at the apple, even if you didn't bid on him. But in like the NFBC, no way. I should, I was the week before that, that I had to get him, and I didn't right. bid enough on him the week before, and I need strikeouts. Like, I should have. Like, I regret not putting 100 on him the week before, which would have got him for sure. Yeah, and I missed him, in, like I said, a couple bidding uh, 200 plus in the NFBC. And Gliber Torres, I wanted to stat, I surprisingly. He was available. I just missed out on him and a couple. But to, to tie this back real quick, in League of Leagues, for us, I bought Lucchese, Nick Pavetta, and Jed Lowry. And um, Lowry is uh, – you realize his on-base percentage last season was? This is an on-base percentage Like league. 410 or something? No, it's not that good. Like uh, I did it to you. I, I did, did it to you. Did. Nice. Well done. Well done. But this is a 15-team 15 15 league with on-base percentage, and it was 360 last year. It's 410 now. He's hitting third. In, in, in Oakland. So I bid, uh, what do you think he's worth? In a 15-team league, on-base percentage league, hitting third at middle infield. We're in trouble, middle infield. Why are we in trouble? Because you drafted a shit team again? No, some injured. Don't worry about it. Whatever. You need a middle infielder. Um, I think Go he's off. worth, out of $100, how many, uh, yeah. what's, um, I think he's worth like 24 Okay. I bid 30 and no one else bid on him. Ah. Again. So, so I, I, I think like, it's sleep at the switch, man. I, I, it's they weird, are, I know. It's weird. You so, know, the funny thing about the Korea thing in Tout Wars is, those dudes are never asleep at the switch. Like they're all right. playing, they're all taking it seriously. But I don't know what happened collectively. Like I bid my whole budget. If I had a hundred, I would have bid a hundred. You know, it's right. like and there was sure. nobody even bidding one. I, I just, it's one of the enduring mysteries of my life to this day. For sure. But anyway, I, I like. I thought getting Lowry, Nick Pavetta, and Lucchese was a pretty uh pretty good pretty good haul for for League of Leagues. Yeah. All right. You know, just I don't give a shit about the process. Just give me the fucking result. That's all. I'm, you know, all right. last year it's embarrassing. And Jonah sent out the standings at the end of NBA season. Right. Terrible. That shit was sad. Right. I mean, seriously. As a human. Truly embarrassing. As a human. Truly I'm one of the most embarrassing yeah. things I've been a part of associated with my entire life. Besides that's this podcast. Like, besides this. Yeah. Podcast. That's saying a lot. No, I know. That's really saying something. 
Talk about signature performance. I mean, that's really saying something. That does say just, yeah. Would you take a person in the three league league that they're really dedicated to who finished with that few points in the three leagues combined? What would you assume their intelligence to be low? Very, very, very low. low. But we're off to a better start this time. And I'm on it. I'm I'm paying attention. I wish I knew the rest of the league wasn't quite as on it, though. I would have more fab, but so be it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's anyway, so what's up with you? Uh, you want to talk about your NFL projection process? I saw you, you posted. Uh, oh, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, I, I do the projections and I just kind of eyeball it and I'll refine it more when I, you know, when the draft happens and, you know, more things shake out. But I have sort of a rough go at the projections already um, in the database. And, you know, I started thinking about it and I, I have these now, but I'm going to refine them when I actually do the rankings for the magazine. I actually order the guys and I end up doing things like, if there's someone like Terrell Pryor who's on the Jets and he may not even make the team. I mean, I guess he will because he got paid a little money, but you know, there's other receivers there and he may just be a bust. But I'm going to rank him ahead of players like Mohamed Sanu, right? Because like Mohamed Sanu just doesn't do shit. I mean, Mohamed Sanu is just like, you know, 62 catches, 700 yards, four touchdowns. Like that's what you're going to get out of Mohamed Sanu. That's all you're going to get. That's all you're ever going to get. I and mean, who knows? It's possible you get more. But the question is, you know, why do we do projections? Like, what's the point of doing projections? And I think, like, in our industry, it's gotten away from people. You know, there's this sense of, like, we've got to do projections because projections are important. But the reason you do projections is so people can draft, you know, have a good cheat sheet to draft off of. And you're like, well, why bother then? Why not just write a cheat sheet? Well, because there's, like, all sorts of different scoring systems, right? Some people have six points per passing touchdown like the NFBC or NFFC. Some people have four points. Some people have distance scoring. Some people have PPR. And you can't do a cheat sheet for every single potential league, you know? So what you do is you just put all the numbers in, and then they can pick the league that they're in and put the parameters in, and then, you know, Philip Rivers' 29 touchdowns or whatever I haven't projected for will be worth whatever they're worth in that system. You can assign three points to each one, or you can assign six points to each one, and, and the system will spit out a list based on, you know, how many points he gets. So you have to do projections for variability to have, you know, it work across different applications, different systems, different parameters. So we're forced to do these projections, but okay, fine. But even so, let's not lose sight of why we're doing them. We're doing them to generate cheat sheets. So, and the example I gave is, okay, let's say Goskowski, Stephen Goskowski, the kicker for the Patriots, tears his ACL in July. And the Patriots bring in two veteran kickers, each of whom has exactly a 50-50 chance of winning the job. If you just did projections, you'd, eat, you'd project each one for half the total amount of Patriots kicking points, right? But, right. The, and that would be less than like the Browns kicker or the Giants kicker, right? Sure. Aldrich Rose says, well, he sucks. He, he might be cut. But whoever the Giants have by the summer, that guy will be projected for like 98, 102, whatever points, okay? And the Patriots kicker, let's say he's good for, you know, Gus Kassel get 140 something. Let's say he's good for 125 if it's a scrub, you know, two scrubs. So those guys would get 62 points each. But if you're in an actual draft in a 12-team league or Stopa or whatever, and everyone's got the good kickers, and you're going for a buck on a kicker, of course you're going to take one of the, whichever of the Patriots kickers you guess is going to be the guy over the Browns or Giants guy, right? So those just have to be separated then is the answer, right? Because, I mean, you have to project Sanu, you have to project those guys with the higher floors, but you, can't, you don't have to necessarily rank them higher. No, I just fudge it. You know, I don't know about Sanu. Okay, that might there, be going okay, a little too go. far because there are deeper leagues where Sanu actually has some value. But that was a, the better example is the Patriots kicker. Like, okay. I would just pick one guy that I think, even if it's 50-50, that I'm going to say is the starter, and I'm going to give him, like, 120 points, right? right. Uh, and I might, I mean, if, th- that would be a very tough situation. I might give both of them 120 points. So I'm just basically right. saying, right, right, right. pick this guy, you know, with, like, the 11th kicker. Because if he doesn't end up being the 11th kicker, you'll be able to find the 11th kicker on waivers. And if he does get the job, maybe he's a top five kicker on that team, right? So yeah. you, you understand, like, it's, if you're just projecting, like, real projections for these guys who have 50% chance of being cut, you're going to have a bad cheat sheet. You're going to be telling people to draft the Giants and Browns kicker ahead of this guy who has a 50% chance of being really, you know, useful. So, you know, that's just an, an obvious example. And so... so why wouldn't I just give the guys the projections? Why wouldn't I just move up, fudge, at the, you know, in the 13th round, whoever's projected for the 60th receiver, move a guy who has a 10% chance of being in the top 20 and a 90% chance of having no impact whatsoever over a guy who's got a 75% chance of being in the top 60 but almost no chance of being in the top 20, right? So I realistic, to, 
Go ahead. Realistic projections, it's aren't that fun either. You know, I mean, I mean, it, it's, 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 if people have not done them before, they'd be surprised at how off they'd be in your first go around, uh, especially if you were editing them. It happened to me once. And, and I know, <laughs> and Mike, Mike Clay put them, his out on Twitter, and people are going nuts with the lack of receiving touchdowns. He's like, oh no, this is very normal, like every single year. And, right. You know, it's 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 just not really what the, the consensus kind of considers. But it's not just that, right? I mean, look, there, there, there's two issues, right? Like, one is, like, guys get hurt, and you don't know who's going to get hurt. So, like, Beckham scored sure. three touchdowns last year, right? So, like, if you projected him for 10, you were off by seven. Okay, but he's hurt, right? So, if you're going to project the guy for 170 targets or whatever Mike has him projected for, then we're saying we're projecting him healthy, right? He's projecting full health. Um, right. You could do, like, the baseball prospectus thing or the steamer thing where everybody loses, like, 20% yeah, of their like games. Yeah. But who cares? We all know what injuries are, right? We all understand, but it gets a little tricky when guys are injury prone and they're the only ones getting docked, you know, so it's, it's, yeah. a mess. but the point is it doesn't matter. Okay. Like people are trying to do their projections. Like there's going to be an audit. And if Tom Brady has 35 touchdowns, but you have the Patriots receivers projected for 40, you fucked up. No, I haven't. I have not fucked up. Well, what do you mean? How can, how can the Patriots quarterbacks be projected for 35 and the receivers be projected for 40? Well, Here's how, because I'm trying to project the Patriots receivers at a place where I think you should draft them, given that some of them are going to get cut or hurt, and Brady is still only going to be projected for 34, 35 touchdowns, and that's not a contradiction. It's a contradiction if you give a shit about the projections being somehow having this sort of um, internal consistency. But again, that, what is the point of these projections is to inform cheat sheets. So right. I feel like everyone's putting the cart before the horse. And then there's like projections contests. You can like enter your projections into a contest and you damn well better have everything be, right. you know, That's super totally super. Different. right. Yeah. That's like, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to power the projections for RotoWire and the applications where they're used so that people win their leagues. So it's really interesting when you, when you see it, you would never give Brady the same amount of touchdowns as his combined receivers because you don't, that's not even important. What's important is where should you tell people to draft Jordan Matthews, right? You may give Jordan Matthews seven touchdowns, even though he may have no role at all, right? Right. But you're, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to sense. fudge his projection so he ends up, I don't know where I'm going to you know, rank him, but the 56th receiver or something. Because who knows? Right. He could be a top 20 receiver if things break, break his way. And what, similar to rankings as well, there are players every year where you have to do that too. It's like, you know, this guy's got to be boomer bust. You know, is he going to make the majors early or is he going right. to stay healthy or not? Similar, but similar. But, but, and, but yeah. And, and here's the, here's the problem with doing the projections straight. You, you, you draft off a straight projections list. It's like, okay, so you get past like the 12th round. You're like scrolling down 40 spots to find a player. He's not the next guy on your list, which is what a cheat sheet's supposed to be. He's right. like buried. Oh yeah. I only project him for a 200 at bats. Yeah. But there's like a 10% chance he gets called up in April. 20% chance. Yeah, but I only right. projected him. I can only project him for 100. If you want to do it right, you would do 10 sets of projections for every player. A 10th percentile, 20th percentile, 30th, right. all the way through and change every single one of those every time a guy got hurt or got better or whatever. And then what you do is you'd say, okay, we're going to calibrate the cheat sheet so it takes the 80th percentile you know, in rounds 12, the 90th percentile after round 15, but like the 40th percentile, the floor in round one, the 50th percentile in round two, and they'd let people customize each round what percentile projection you want to use for each guy. And then, you know, or you could say, oh, I'm going to do all 50% or whatever you want. That's how you could actually get around it and make it work. But no one's going to do that work. That's like a ridiculous yeah. amount of work. No, that's a perfect way of doing it, though. Uh, obviously, no one's going to do that. But, yeah, how do you rank a backup running back with upside? Either they are going to play, you know, they're going to get 40 carries or they might be a top five fantasy running back. I mean, there's no way to properly rank that. So unless you're doing it like you're saying. you got to fudge uh, it. you got, you got to give this guy, you know, it, it's not that hard because when, when, where that guy's going to rank, you know, the players aren't that highly ranked around him. So you say, okay, I'll give him an extra touchdown here. I'll give him a receiving touchdown. Who knows? Maybe he'll get one. I'll give him a few extra yards. I'll downgrade these really boring guys a little bit below, you know, to their 40th person. You know, I'll just move them down a little. And so I would not win a projections contest. I know these are not like, you know, rock solid in terms of like, okay, this is the real mean projection for these guys, but it spits out a cheat sheet that is my cheat sheet. Rather than for multiple reasons, yet another reason why you wouldn't win one of those projection contests. But, <laughs> yet yeah. another reason, yeah. You know who's not projected well are my either current form 49ers or former or soon to be former 49ers. Man, horrible. Reuben Foster is, looks like a horrible human being. Yeah. And you see this about Alden Smith? What do you do? I mean, he he blew a, a point four zero while trying uh, while uh, 
meeting uh, with the cops to get his ankle bracelet. He blew that at the station. A 0 .40? 0 .40. They they label that as a onset coma. If you look at the right. the, the list, the DMV. He's such an alcoholic that he can funk. He's like Nicolas Cage and leaving Las Vegas, where he can just drink yeah. like eight bottles. Yes. You know what I'm talking. He about? walked himself into the police uh, thing to, to to check himself in to get fitted for an ankle bracelet, and out. he registered a point four zero, and they arrested him right there. Yeah, that is but wild. But just you know, I mean, obviously he's done a lot of you know wrapped his car around a tree and done crazy shit. Did he make a bomb threat in the airport? And didn't someone else do that shit too? For the I I, I really respect yeah, that. Those, yeah, that. he did that, and then very recently uh, someone, someone else just made a joke, joke about it. Yeah. When I was right. 18, um, it was the first time I was going internationally. I mean, I went to like Caribbean and stuff, but like I was going to France with my friend who was French mm -hmm. and we were in like the international line and it was very serious. Like the security, this is like way before nine 11 and I made some sort of bomb joke and like he and his family looked at me like, dude, you can't make that joke. You can't, you just can't make that joke. You're right? No. Yeah. But I mean, right. you should be able to make that joke. You know, why the fuck can't I make that joke? You know what you can't do? I probably said this before in another podcast, but a few, like six months ago, there was this loud bang and Sasha was like, what was that? And I was like, Oh, maybe a bomb went off. And then we started talking about what a bomb was and all the stuff. And, and then she's like, Google, Google bomb and how to make a bomb. And I was like, no, you know, I can't, I can't Google that. I'm sorry. I can't yeah. Google. That. I'm like, I'm a free person, right? I'm just for my daughter, just getting this information. Like, what is that? How is that? I mean, not that that's the best information for her to have, but she's five at the time. I mean, not like she's right. going to do anything about it, but you right. just cannot Google that. You just can't. You probably went on Facebook and searched is what you probably did, huh? Yeah. I no. I mean, you just, you can't. Do any? No, of course not. No, you'd be on a list or something. Right. Yeah. But it's messed yeah. up because like, let's say I'm writing a screenplay, right? And sure. I want to have a character who's like explaining how it works. Now I got to be on a fucking list. Like I'm not free to do what the hell I want because I'm being tracked. You're being tracked. The words that you're searching are tracking you. It's okay. Well, I mean, what, I mean, there's obviously no perfect answer to this. I mean, what, what, what is the solution then? Are you just stating that or are you I'm just saying we shouldn't be tracking what people are fucking saying, what free people have oh, committed okay. no crimes have been saying or searching or doing. Yeah. Why yeah. the fuck are they tracking yeah. what I'm doing? I'm not, okay. you know, I've done nothing wrong that they know about. You know the shit I've done, but right. they don't know right. anything I've done. So it's like, what the fuck? You know, why are we all under suspicion? I can't just Google some shit, right? right. Why the yeah. fuck is Google keeping track of that shit? It's not helping. I mean, obviously everyone's doing it on the sly now. Everyone knows this, so it's not even helping, right? right? No one's yeah. dumb enough to Google that shit. Except from like a, yeah, no. not maybe you know from some sort of public terminal somewhere, you know. That's how they caught John Doe in seven was a, the public library access the the books he checked out. So that's just our generation's version right here. So you just got to watch your tracks, man. Yeah, but they caught him after like investigating a murder. You know what I mean? Like there was actually like something going on. I'm just it's fucking true. searching the shit just for yeah. to write a screenplay or tell my daughter something. Right. It's fucked up. Yeah, no, I know, I understand what Who you're the saying. Fuck but see, consented to that. At first, it was like, oh, cool, you can search for shit. No, no, it's no, like, no, no. Let me, let me be clear. Search. What? Let me, be, let me be clear. I'm not saying that I don't have anything to hide because that's actually the opposite of yeah. truth. But oh, yeah. I just don't care about that stuff. I just search because I'm like, oh, I, uh, mainly because I'm lazy. But also, it's just like I just imagine, right. like I Google said last right now, week. During this conversation. With my other information, I assume that they just have it all. Oh, like, I guess that's Google a little that different. Google that shit right now. now you're well, what? Google it now. Google, just, Google how to make a bomb right now on your thing. I, don't even, I'm not, I shouldn't even be talking about this. This audio no, I'm is not probably saying, this Oh, audio literally, is probably those searchable. words. How to, okay, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't do that. You're right. You, you called my bluff. I'm not doing that You would not do that shit. I'm not doing that. You're right. It's fine. All right, you called my bluff. Okay, I got your call. All right, a couple other things. Okay. Um, my AL Tau team was like in fifth place, and my three hitters. Remember, I spent most on pitching, like you did in, in AL Labor. Yeah. How's that team doing, by the way? It's all right. It has some injuries. A horrible twelve dollar Jock Peterson buys uh, like middle. You're really really trying to defend that so desperately too. It's really sad. It's embarrassing. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So yeah. uh, Melanson, my other. It doesn't help when one of your two closers is Melanson in an only league, and it's. When you when you lose already like thirty dollars immediately in those, it's just so demoralizing. There's just nothing to replace. You gotta get a Correa for a buck. Um, yes, so sure. my three biggest buys, non pitching buys, my hitting buys, which are like you know again, I spent like the least amount on hitting, were Stanton, Bregman, and Buxton. Yeah, that's no, that's not great. That's not nah, ideal. That, so, but I'm still in like fifth place. So I feel good. I have like oh, Mark Canna great. just homered again and like had a good yeah. game last week. I've like picked up. You know, lots of guys. We'll see. Profar got nice. concussed, but he's playing. I feel good about that team. Um, what else you got? Because I got a couple other topics. Um, um, I don't have much. We can go to you. Uh, uh, I checked. I don't ever go to the movie theater anymore these days, just having two kids. But I saw a movie, The Quiet, uh, Quiet Place. Uh, uh, have you heard about this? No. It's like 100% Rotten Tomatoes uh, by the top critics. And um, 
I went in a matinee, so it was like a nearly an empty theater, and I won't ruin it, and I'm not gonna say it's amazing or something, but it's kind of, I guess it'd be classified as a horror film, I'm not normally into that, but um, it was definitely entertaining, I'd recommend it, uh, it's called A Quiet Place, John Krasinski directed it, starred in it with his wife, the dude from The Office, um, and it's, uh, Boys uh, alerts um, uh, an alien force, so basically it's an hour and a half long movie with uh, very, very little speaking whatsoever, so it's interesting. No no talking in nearly the entire movie. Nice. All right. Uh, I won't probably say and that. And um, other than that, uh, I don't really have that much, really. I was going to ask, I think I heard you say this, and one thing I was going to ask you about is, are, are you really fasting once a week these days? Yeah. Well, yeah, 36 hours. I, I stretch it to 42 <laughs> hours or 40 hours uh, this week, but yeah, Sunday night I eat a big meal. And then yeah. I wake up Monday. I don't eat anything. I'll so once in a while I'll have a bone broth, like a cup of it, or uh, just like some salad, but no like tomatoes or carrots, something with sugar. But mm -hmm. usually I, it'll just be nothing. Uh, and I can have coffee or tea or something with no sugar. And then I go to sleep Monday night. I wake up Tuesday, and then you know Tuesday at like sometimes in the morning I'll eat something. But th this week it wasn't until like two p.m. in the afternoon on Tuesday that I ate something. And and you you recommend this? You like I, it? You're, you're not. I, you're, you're doing I am. Annoyed with myself that you yeah, didn't do it earlier. That I had that I was waiting until I was almost forty-seven years old to start doing this. Like, and what? Uh, why did you start? Um, I actually started because this summer um, I had a bet with Trevor Ray who could lose fifteen pounds in a month. Mm -hmm. and Trevor Ray was a, a flabby sack of shit. You know what I mean? So for him, like all he had to do was like not be a total, um, you know, garbage. He should not even begin with. Wasn't yeah, he? but he was he he was like one seventy. You know, and, and he should have been uh -oh. like one thirty. You know, so like. Yeah. For him to drop the 15 pounds, he dropped like 20, and all he did was like play soccer and stop getting drinking all this beer every day. You know what I mean? It was like super easy for him. But me, I was already eating pretty healthy, and I was like 198, um, and I'm older too. He's like 31. Sure. So I yeah. like, you know, I was like, all right, I'm gonna stop eating carbs. So it was like two weeks go by, and I've lost like three pounds. I got to drop like 12, you know, another two weeks. So I'm like, shit, I gotta start exercising. But like, my ankles fucked up, so I'm jogging. Ankles hurting. It's fucking hot as shit in LA at the time. It's just miserable, you know. So I'm like. All right, I got to start cheating. I got to figure out a way. And so I started Googling shit about uh, fasting and intermittent fasting. And the last day, I, uh, I went out to Heather's uh, dad's beach club, and they have a paddle tennis court. I played two sets of paddle tennis with Heather, sweat like crazy, didn't eat. 4 p.m., I, I pounded some raw milk. It's the most nutritious food. So I was like, all right, I pound a quart of that. Super then, food. It's like a super, it's like the, you know, it's raw milk, not that pasteurized shit. And then I just, you know, went to bed that night, woke up the next day. Didn't eat anything all day, then played paddle tennis that night again with this other dude for like two sets, sweated like crazy. Woke up the next nice. morning of the day and beat it by 0.2 pounds. The, nice. Uh, the, so I was down to 182. Right. Um, so it was 15 pounds in, uh, yeah, in four weeks, but it was really like 12 pounds in two weeks. But I never really gained it back. Um, I just you know, kind of was eating low carb. And then when I got to uh, Portugal, the place that I, I like to go do my work at and eat this like paleo food at is closed mm -hmm. on Mondays. It wasn't last year. So then I went and ate this like shitty, like to gluten-free toast at this other place felt like shit. And I was like, you know what? Monday, I'm just going to fast. So I started doing it and it's just really good, man. Your head gets super clear, you know, by you the see. end of the day, you're hungry, like at some point, but like by the night you're like super clear headed. And you're drinking just water. You said water, coffee, tea, if you oh. want, you know, okay. no sugar stuff. And, uh, it's, a, it's great. I mean, think about this. Like I eat like gourmet food. I eat a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and I spend money on it. So it's like, it's 30, 40 bucks a day. It's euro. It's like 50 bucks a day times 50 weeks. That's 2,500 bucks. I'm getting paid to do this. First of all, a year. Secondly, you probably drop 15 pounds or don't gain it back in my case. Just no problem. You know, like no, no effort just cause you're basically just cutting out a seventh of your caloric right. intake. Okay. Third, you're like strengthening your willpower, your discipline, your, your ability to just, you know, not do what you're you know, brain or perhaps the yeast in your stomach that craving sugar are, are commanding you to do. You're just, you know, you don't have to graze on shit. It just, it just empowers you to be like, yeah, I don't need to consume shit today, you know? And, uh, and you know, you look better. You uh, probably, it's, it's good for your health. It totally uh, gives your blood sugar system a break. Like you're burning fat. You start burning fat instead of sugar and your body's actually supposed to burn fat. Why do you think when people eat too much shit, they store it as fat? Because that's like the fuel. That's the storage. People, you know, there, there's some debate about what, you know, our prehistoric ancestors ate for most of human evolution. But there's no dispute that those fuckers didn't definitely went without eating for significant periods of time in ways yeah. that we just don't anymore. So I would highly recommend it. If you're like super unhealthy, I'd, 
you know, get some medical um, supervision. But if you're just like a normal dude, try 24 hours, just go dinner to dinner and then try 36. I'm going to try to do like two or three days at some point. It just apparently it totally resets your system. There's people, there's a video I watch, like people heal some like long-term ailments, chronic ailments go away. Lots of shit because you're, you, first of all, a lot of foods are, foods are inflammatory and shit. So like you don't even know how you're reacting to them and just your system just resets. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm trying to be a little bit healthier myself. I started running recently, and man, I'm suffering the worst shin splints of my life. You ever had those? They're yeah, kill me. I've, I've had that a bit. Yeah, those. those so those. so embarrassingly out of shape, but uh, I'm I'm trying to run. Ran a couple miles, and I ordered some new Nike free runs, some shoes I was told to get, and so I'm trying. I'm attempting. So that's interesting to me, uh, the fasting aspect. So I thought yeah. I'd bring that up. But uh, you, you said you had a couple other things. Yeah, and so it was ties in. I've been like, you know, I, I follow a bunch of random people on Twitter now. Like I, I mute out like so much bullshit that I don't want to see, but I, I, uh, I've seen an awful lot of my, uh, ugly mug on the nutless monkey. I, I, I don't go on Twitter daily all day, but every now and then I, the, for some reason it's been the, what you missed or in case you missed, they keep popping up <laughs> shit you're putting up there with my face associated with it, but whatever, it's, continue. It's super embarrassing, right? It's really bad. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. It's go terrible. Ahead. It's really yeah. terrible. I'm sorry, but I do appreciate the use of your likeness yeah. for that, uh, for that site. Um, and there's these dudes who talk about like stoicism, like not, you know, not like spending money and shit. And I'm thinking like, I spend so much money. I know you you're probably worse than me, but I don't you know, for years. I'm 40, almost 47. How many times I just go out to dinner, ordered in food, 40 bucks here, 30 bucks there, a hundred bucks there. You're just spending money, spending money on shit. It's All like, the time still do. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I can easily not eat breakfast. I feel better when I don't eat breakfast. I can eat two hard boiled eggs for lunch or a hard boiled egg for breakfast. Super healthy. Mm-hmm. Spend no fucking money. You know, like. Day after hard-boiled day eggs are after great day. too because you, you could cook them for a week and keep them in your fridge. Hard boiled eggs are, yeah. are great. Or, I mean, eggs are like so cheap, so nutritious. Mm-hmm. Like, why? You know, it's just we're just such consumers, you know, and, and it's just this whole idea of like being more of a producer. So I've been making my I have, friend, uh, uh, I have a friend who uh, got their kids some chickens to kind of live out, out in the country and we get fresh eggs. Yeah. It's amazing. It's good. It tastes legitimately better. I, it's great. It, like the yolks are way different, way more orange, yeah. and they, you can tell the difference big time. Yeah, that's and you got to wash the outside of them because they don't go through the same process. Like they're legit, like very fresh. It, it's and they go bad sooner, but they're, they're you can tell the difference. They're really good. Yeah, you should and be eating those. Pretty cheap too, considering they, each one lays like one or two a day. I think so. That's cheap if they're free. So if I get this house out in the countryside, I have to get a hen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sasha likes hens. Sasha, when she was four, said hens are the people that lay eggs. So <laughs> nice. we'll get her one. But uh, yeah, no, that shit is great for you. And, uh, yeah. and it's just cheap, right? And, and uh, oh, I mean, the hen itself is cheap, but the eggs are cheap if you buy them in a, an organic sure. market or the farmer's market or whatever. But it's just, um, it's just no need for so much shit. You still go out. You know what's good about fasting too is you really like food the next day. You're like, right. ah, food tastes you delicious. It you appreciate, appreciate it. it. And you don't yeah. need, you don't, you're not really giving up anything just for a fucking day a week. It's not even a big deal. You still can eat whatever you want. I eat fucking giant tubs of ice cream from this awesome gelato place on Saturday and Sunday. Two giant tubs. Yeah. I don't care. I'm still losing weight because I'm fasting. I'm like, I, got, I can do this. You and love then, the ice cream over there, huh? Oh, it's fucking amazing. I, I used to, you know, when I was in the U.S., I, I liked the U.S. style. And then um, I just got used to the gelato style. It's a little thicker. It's a little more uh, viscous. It's not as, like, uh, runny. Right. Uh, and I'm just, like, I'm converted, man. Yeah. yeah nice. It's good. No, that's so what not, else co- you got? not code for anything. Uh, <laughs> so that's really it that's all i got last week we were ranting about syria it looks like it was just a for show airstrike which is good i hope they leave it at that just like a bullshit thing that probably never happened and then like a bullshit airstrike that didn't do anything let's just call it a day declare victory call it a day i'm down with that leave it alone that's, leave it that, alone yeah okay that's your takeaway i mean that's what you think uh, it seems yeah. it seems like they didn't do shit i mean they just like did this half-assed thing made some claims they the weirdest thing is, I, I don't know who you follow on Twitter or who you talk to in your regular life, but I feel like more and more people just don't believe that shit. Like, like when we got lied into the Iraq war, like we were like, yeah, the government, you know, people were just not quite as skeptical. 9-11 had just happened. We had to like get together and trust our government to, you know, take care of things. It was more like we weren't totally jaded at that point. But I think by now people are just like, they're fucking lying. Who the fuck knows what's going yeah. on there? Our I think it's a heavy, heavy, uh, heavy set of skepticism at this stage. I, I believe that to be true for sure. Yeah. So that's a good thing. It is a very good thing. Right. Yeah. It took, it took enough, but it finally is here. It feels like, yeah. So yeah. All right. Uh, All right. Well, on that note. 
Yeah. All right. All right, man. That's all I got for you. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, I, can, I hope to continue dominating you in the NFBC league. <laughs> Yeah. This is I, crazy. I, I, hope, I hope your YFNF uh, improves because I'd hate to take 500 from you. you know? Yeah, we, I know. We knew that was a once in a lifetime yeah. thing that you won that, but I didn't realize it was yeah. th that anomalous. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm really going to really show how, how anomalous it was. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. How, how do you say that word? Anomalous. There you go. That one. You said it. All right. Yeah. All right, man. All right, let's, take let's it get out of here. All right, later. Man. All right, later.